American Hindus break silence and condemn anti-Muslim hate. So, you know, every week I try to put the good news at the end of the show, and this is very good news. On April 22nd, a group of Hindu rights advocates, religious leaders, and other cause-oriented groups released a statement condemning, condemning the worsening religious violence in India. The statement, which denounced the weaponized Hindutva ideology, was initially released by, quote, Hindus for Human Rights, or HHR, a U.S.-based group that advocates for pluralism and civil and human rights in South Asia and North America. Quote, we are dismayed to see Hindu leaders in India and, uh, India and abroad openly embrace Hindutva, a century-old political ideology that, see, that sees citizens of other faiths as inherently foreign and not qualified to enjoy the full benefits of Indian citizenship, the statement said. The statement also calls for Hindus to break their, quote, collective silence and speak out against this hate that violates the deepest teachings of our tradition. The statement was released amidst, in, in, you know, escalating violence in India. The United States Commission on International Religious Freedom, or USFRS for, for short, 2022 report labeled India as a country of particular concern for the third time. HHR's statement urged religious leaders and other rights groups to sign the pledge to speak out against anti-Muslim bigotry. This is going to be make uh, this is going to make the job of people like us a lot easier, because I think some Hindus will have learned from some Muslims who just accuse people who criticize Islam as like bigots or Islamophobe or racist or whatever. And I think a lot of Hindus type people have copied that method from some some Muslims, and just like anybody who criticizes them. Or, if, or anybody who calls out their bigotry or discrimination or sometimes fascism of anti-Hindu bigots, right? So this is a very powerful way. Like, like we could be like, actually, actually what we're saying, a lot of Hindus agree with us. So having this to point to as a reference to like, this is not just what we're saying. This is what also a lot of Hindus are saying. Hindus who respect human rights are saying it's going to really be something that we could use often. Like this is basically kind of like what a lot of ex-Muslims were useful for when criticizing Islam, right? So because a lot of like, I don't know, Westerners, when they want to criticize Islam, they're like, oh, you're being bigots, right? But having the ex-Muslim community come out and be like, we're from this community and we're saying Islam is like, horrible as well like it makes it more difficult for for people to accuse them as bigots right so this is also good to be like oh look hindus are criticizing hindu as well it's not just us mm -hmm. oh wow thought, somebody donated 20 dollars. thank you so much yes someone anonymous donated 20 canadian dollars well thank you thank anonymous you. person for a generous donation also someone earlier someone else anonymously donated five dollars Towards the beginning of the show and as four, well. And we've... Five, four, and 20. Thank you and to all of you and anybody yeah. that we missed. Yeah. Amazing. Um, they, so there is a lot of interesting stuff that I want to talk about with this news. Well, Blink Name is saying, this is awesome. And Aqua Marine is saying, you know, these are just leftist, non-resident Indians. This won't even make the news in India. Well, I actually got this from Indian news source, sites and sources. So that's not entirely true. Also, the title of this news is American Hindus Break Silence, but it was actually because it was predominantly American organizations, but it was also actually an internationally signed by religious leaders. A lot of Hindus in many were in India and then many were in places like South Africa or England. Um, so it in many it actually is like really an international um, pledge. Um, so one thing that i thought was interesting about this news something to consider is one it's nice to say see people like really speaking out about this issue um but two it kind of raises this question about complicity and the 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 rhetoric around complicity so for example i um read articles by journalists like uh rana 
Rana Ayub, and oh, this this other woman's name. It starts with an A, something Sharwani. Um, and they talk about how this is a the, the Hindu majority needs to speak out. Rana Ayub sometimes uses language talking about the complicity of the majority. But Armin, I know that sometimes you have some criticisms of like the silence is violence type of rhetoric. Do you think that Hindus are responsible or complicit? No. In, are, are they responsible to speak out against this? No. And are they complicit if they don't? No, they're not. You're not. No, okay. You pick whatever active form of activism you want to do. You're not guilt by you're not guilty by association just because you didn't speak out against something. You're not. You don't have to. Nobody has to speak out against anything. I mean, as long as you're picking some good to do, it doesn't have to be the good that I think is important. You could do something else. Like if I, for example, if a I can't be like, oh, you're a Hindu, so you have to, you're responsible, you have to speak against this. That's bull crap. That's kind of like the people who say, like, uh, you know, white silence is violence, or something like that, some bull crap like that. I don't know what they say, right? Mm -hmm. But like, or people who accuse Muslims of not speaking out, like, well, they don't have to speak out. It wasn't them, like, mo like Muslim, Muslim, moderate Muslims who don't speak out against like Islamic extremism. Like, why do they have to speak out against it? They could do go some do some other good thing. It wasn't them. Why are they responsible? They're not responsible, right? What if you're like a Hindu who just prefers to do good by, I don't know, doing some work for the environment, you know what I mean? Or keeping the oceans clean. Like, I don't know, you, you, you don't have to do the thing, the brand of good that other people want you to do. You could just pick and choose whatever you like. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. that. So here's here's an example. So um, I found the quote I was looking for. Arfa Kanun Sharwani, who's a journalist at The Wire, said, for the Hindu community in India, this is a 9-11 moment. The way the global Muslim community condemned the violence in the name of their religion, it is time for Hindus to actively disassociate themselves from anti-Muslim violence being carried out in their name. It could. It, it's good if it comes as a recommendation, but not as a demand. You don't get to demand people. If you, if people, if if some, if Hindus choose to condemn it, then we're grateful for it. But you cannot condemn it if they don't, because they don't have to. But what about people who are really speaking to, about this with a real sense of urgency, given how incredibly fast things are escalating? That's why in India. And that's the, why we recommend it. And the and the literal calls for genocide and the the legitimate fears of genocide in India. Yeah, like, yeah. So that's that's why that's why it's a good it's a good recommendation. It's a good request. Okay, but not everybody is like people are not responsible for fixing every ill, especially if somebody thinks that they're they're responsible just for fixing that L just because of their association with it. You're not responsible for it. You're as responsible to fix that L as any other L, regardless of the community of the label that you have been assigned to you by birth. You didn't choose that label. It was assigned to you by birth most for most people. So given that you had no choice in the label, you're also not responsible, you know, you could pick that ill to fix or any other ill and it's a good recommendation it's a good request but it shouldn't be a demand but they're saying okay that that's a luxury because we're dealing with the heightened possibility of mass murder like yeah, what but you're saying sounds nice but like that that might be a luxury when we're trying to prevent an atrocity true and but that's the same case with other ills as well I'm just saying, for example, why wouldn't you say that about climate change? That's also a major problem. I'm just saying as a Hindu, okay, you're not more responsible for the other people doing hateful things in the name of Hinduism. You're not more responsible. You're as responsible for fixing that as climate change, as, I don't know, human rights violations in Yemen, as, 
you know, you're as responsible for. Like those other ills are also very bad, and you're in the privilege of deciding to care about it or not. Um, I just don't want to think make you feel like you're you're more. There's a duty more to fix this ill just because of the label Hindu that has been assigned to you. Okay, but even though that thing has been assigned to you, this this thing is happening because of this intensified rhetoric about defending this identity that you happen to be born into. So it's done in your name, so to speak. And mm -hmm. if you speak out against it and dissociate from it, try to take power away from it, that could prevent the most horrible right. forms of this from actually materializing, but we need the majority to stand up and prevent that. Everything you're That's saying. The reasoning. Yes. Everything you're saying goes to show that it's a good idea and it's a great recommendation, but it's not a must like none, like that's what I'm, co I'm confirming based on what you're saying, that it would be a good idea for you to do, to help out. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but it mm -hmm. shouldn't be, and uh, yeah, it shouldn't be seen as a responsibility. It should be seen as something that is welcomed, but it's not a responsibility. Um, I want to address this comment. I don't know if it's true or not. Um, oxymoron. oxymoron is saying Hindus for Human Rights is a baby of of the Council of American Islamic Relations or CARE. Is it? Uh, they, is this an I haven't heard that. They don't even hide the connections. Jewish Voices for Peace is similar. Anti-Zion group, anti-Zionist group propped up by care. Okay, I don't know if this is true, but I've seen, based on my experience, anybody who talks to anybody or the loosest amount of connection is good enough for people to say that you are part of them, right? You know, based on the level of association that you need for people to be like, oh you are with them and you're just working together or you're working under them, I could be accused of being a baby of care. You know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> the, the, you know, the, the loose, the very, the such, there's such loose degrees of separation that people point to, they're like, oh, you're with them. I'm like, okay, then I'm with almost everybody based on that definition of you're with them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if this is true, but I've seen based on what I've seen, I would be very skeptical. I'm not saying it's not true, by the way. Maybe it is mm -hmm. true. Um, highly skeptical. Forever Stormy is saying Hindus should speak out for their own sake because these Hindu nutcases are turning the clock back on the Hindu society. <laughs> um, and, you know, people had uh, kind of some pushback, Armin, to you. Like, Blank Name is saying it's not a demand, but an obligation of a neighbor because we share a community. Okay. There's no obligation. It's a good idea. Why is it an obligation? As there's a, no obligation as a, as a contributing member of a pro-social society. It's a good idea. It's a recommended. It would be nice if you do so. It's not an obligation. Why? Why does it have to be an obligation? The things that should be obligations are for you not to do evil. Stopping other evil is not an obligation. It should be something that you encourage people to do. And secular Sakai is saying this isn't a public obligation or duty, but it is an optional obligation one can choose to embrace, and more people should. Isn't oblig optional and obligation contradictory? I'm not sure how obligation works. I think like the fit way. Optional obligation, obligation. I think that's a. That is a little bit of an oxymoron. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. I, I think optional obligation is self-contradictory. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Um, and <laughs> Arjun is saying, "I'm smelling a slight leftism creeping back into Susanna." Well, I, I just wanted. <laughs> I just wanted to throw a little. You know. I'm, I am inclined towards that, but I just want to not fully because I still have a lot of problems with like the silence is violence rhetoric. Um, but I just want to throw a little bit of that at Armin to see how he would respond. Um, Beep Boop is saying, uh, Hindus for Human Rights is a newly created by a left-leaning 
uh, Hindus do, they do have a political agenda. Sure. Most groups have some form of political agenda. Um, oh, name drop, name drop. <laughs> it's an oxymoron. <laughs> That oxymoron is pointing that <laughs> the username oxymoron is pointing He's like, out. oh my <laughs> gosh, you name drop me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and AGA okay. just became a member. Thank you for becoming a member, I think he AGA. Was, I think she, so she was a member. I think she, what she did was she renewed it or upgraded. I'm not sure what she did. Well, because we lost our membership, like when you come back. No, like, no, she it, was it already a member me, by the beginning of I the day. I had to refresh I... mine. Okay. You have to sign up as, as, again. But AGA, please drop, please drop some uh, emojis in yeah. the live chat for us to demonstrate your new member abilities. Um. <laughs> yep. I don't know. I think. Um, can I can I read a small expert excerpt of a of a piece written by this journalist Rana Ayub? I thought it was very Wait. interesting. Yeah, just one second. AJ is saying deleting my other account. Please swap mod roles for me here. Thanks. You have to confirm it uh, that this is actually you somewhere else to Susanna for us to do that because yeah. it would be easy. It would be easy for somebody to yeah yeah. The okay, real cool. AGA knows how to contact me. <laughs> the real AGA knows. Yes. Okay. Um. So, I don't know. So, Rana Ayub is a highly controversial journalist in India. She comes from a Muslim background. And um, she has experienced, I, um, I'm i pretty sure, like a think tank or um, someone did the data work on this. She experienced one of the largest hate campaigns, like, in the history of Twitter. Um, and so, I disagree with her on a lot of things. But I think she's in, an incredibly gifted writer. And... Um, she has some interesting opinions, but she's extremely controversial. So this is something she wrote that I, I, I don't know, it just really stuck out to me. So this was written a few months ago. And it says, for the last three months, Muslims in Guru, uh, shoot, Guragan have been threatened by a mob that refuses to let them offer their Friday prayers. Saffron-clad vigilantes can be seen in videos shared across the country where they threaten and heckle Muslim priests and locals. In one incident, a young Hindu man Ashke Yadav, who I choose to believe is not an aberration, offered the premises of, the, uh, of his business to Muslim for their prayers. In an interview with a news publication for Article 14, Yadav in urged the media to not call him brave for doing the mere, bare minimum as a member of the majority community. I choose to, to believe that Yadav is not an aberration, just as I choose to believe that the ordinary Indian Hindus are more concerned about the rising unemployment, inflation, starvation, the, and the safety and security of their children. I choose to believe that insecure Hindu vigilantes who seek pleasure in denying Muslims their fundamental rights are a small minority. I choose to believe that the India I was born and raised in, where my friends, my doctor, my therapist, my psychiatrist, the surgeon that performed a potentially deadly surgery that saved me from paralysis, my next door neighbor, without whom my um, family's Eid festiv festivities are incomplete, are the true Hindu majority. I believe, oh wait, then it's blah, blah, blah. I choose to believe that the silent Hindu is equally appalled when churches and priests are attacked. And I don't know. I I really okay. like that because I don't like it. You don't. You can't choose to believe. You have to. Your beliefs have to match reality. You can't just choose to believe things that you would like to be true. No, but she's speaking towards like she's someone who does kind of talk about this rhetoric of the complicity of the majority. But it's about her own right. personal hope that. Yeah. Okay. You can say I hope. You should say I hope. No, you should say I choose to believe. Okay, because you know you have to see like you know your belief has. I recommend that you don't choose to believe things that you hope to be true. I recommend you believe things that are actually you could verify that is actually true. So replace all those beliefs with hope instead of I I choose to believe. That's not how beliefs should supposed to work. I mean, it would be, it's better if it doesn't work like that. By the way, there's a lot of hate in the life for this woman. Even if you just need to, 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 have, to, to have a belief just for to get yourself through what you're going through. She, the level of abuse so you she can experiences believe... is, is heinous. Like, 
on a whole different level. That's partially why I have an affinity for her because I've gone through the same thing. There's a, there's a lot of hate in the live chat for her. Who is she again? What's her name again? Like I said, she's she's a journalist. She writes um, opinion pieces for the Washington Post. What's um, her name again? I'm going to Rana Ayub. And she, um, I don't know, it's kind of ironic that Hindu Ooh, has hush. had all these systematic campaigns against her because they've made her partially contributed oh, no. to her being a famous journalist. Okay. okay. For so. being so openly critical of India, like, yeah, she is fiercely hated and abused on a level that I can't even put into words. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So there's, there's mixed opinions about her in the live chat. Some people seem to like her. Some people seem to hate I her. I disagree with, with her and her opinions on Islam in a lot of ways, but I think she's very gifted as a writer, even though sometimes I even think she's being a little at like hyperbolic or exaggerating things. Um, yeah, but just like reading her work is like really good. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Abhabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below. Thank <laughs> you.